We don't love him in spite of his weirdness. We love him because of it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Winston was the best character on New Girl. Yeah, just say something to her. Shotty, what that thing do? No. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the funniest and most memorable moments from New Girl's Winston Bishop. Number 10. Fruity Drinks Nick warned us that fruity drinks make Winston all weird. I'm especially not making those drinks for you. What? Why? Because you can't handle it. You drink them way too fast and then you get weird. Oh, come on, come on. That was like years ago, dude. But while Nick finds this weirdness annoying, it just makes us love Winston more. Against his better judgment, he still gives in and makes Winston a fruity drink at Schmidt's rebranding party. What the hell is this? Come on, Schmidt. You know I don't make girly drinks anymore. I didn't buy that stuff. You didn't buy this? Then who did? Upon taking one sip of the drink, Winston gets hilariously loopy. And here comes the weirdness. Not weird, just a guy who really wants a drink. Mm. 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 It's like an explosion of fruit! There it is. Winston is already a pretty goofy guy without any help, but the fruity drink pushes him to extremes. He giggles like a little kid, continuously calls himself naughty for some unknown reason, and even starts spontaneously singing. Look at me being so naughty. <laughs> so naughty. It might have been Schmidt's party, but Winston stole the show. The chills that you spill up my back to keep me filled with satisfaction when we're done. Satisfaction of what's to come. <laughs> Number 9. Being Weird with Ferguson. I deserve better. And so does Ferguson. I'm keeping the cat. I got your cat! Winston originally steals Ferguson from a cheating girlfriend and goes through a brief phase of wanting to kill the poor cat as revenge. Oh, hey, Nick. You know, I couldn't figure out the best way to kill Ferguson, so I decided to just let him choose how he wants to die. So no one could have predicted that they would become best friends. Along his misguided journey to exact revenge on the completely innocent cat, Winston ends up falling in love with Ferguson instead. Hey, you want to split that pasta from last night? Hmm? Winston and Ferguson about to split some pasta. <laughs> He's absolutely crazy about this feline. Apparently, he takes baths with him, eats with him, and even takes weekly selfies with him. If I were off my rocker, would I take a weekly selfie with my cat? Oh, Winston. You see, just last week, I took this selfie with... <laughs> Wait, not that one. That's crazy. Not that I forgot I had this one. The rest of the group may roll their eyes and look at him in confusion, but Winston's bond with Ferguson only proves how big of a heart he has. And it's also just really funny. Ferguson, what? where have you been yet, yeah. huh? When you leave the house, you take your cell phone with you. Number eight, when he didn't study for his police exam. Watching Winston avoid studying for his police exam is like a masterclass in procrastination. Doesn't she work? Shouldn't you be studying? Or live somewhere? Shouldn't you be studying? Or have worried loved ones? Studying. Every student probably has some spectacular stories of putting their work off until the last minute, but Winston is so nervous for his police academy entrance exam that he gets seriously creative in the lengths he'll go to to put off studying. He fills his room with handmade paper snowflakes that are totally necessary right this second. Not enough. Not enough. And he inserts himself into Nick's relationship with Kai. Nick, my man, as unbelievable as this sounds, <laughs> you're her sugar daddy. <laughs> what kind of girl would want me as her sugar daddy? Only one kind, a homeless woman. Coach has to tie him to a chair just to get him to buckle down and study. What? Coach! Coach, I can't turn the pages! How am I gonna study if I can't turn the pages? Coach! Number seven when he had a discussion with Schmidt about race. Indian food, dinner, you down? I thought maybe we'd eat at a place where you wanted to eat at tonight, Winston. As a strong black man. What? What are you talking about? Like any great sitcom, New Girl occasionally discusses serious topics with a touch of humor. Schmidt worries about Winston not being able to properly express himself while having all white roommates. <sighs> Winston, tonight is about you. I I want to be the black friend that you never had. I have black friends, Schmidt. I want you to feel supported. So Schmidt takes it upon himself to try and allow Winston to be himself. And Winston schools him on exactly what that means. So what's next? There was just one thing that I miss. I probably shouldn't say, man, I can't. No, come on. It's us, man. Schmidt, I could really go for some crack. 
Through a series of hilarious encounters, Winston teaches Schmidt that having white friends did not make him lose his black identity. Winston tricks Schmidt into thinking that he wants to get drugs, and Schmidt goes so far as to invite a stranger into their car to buy some. Okay, look, just you want it? You want it? Oh, no, 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 The whole thing ends up being pretty funny, but it is nice to see Winston talk to Schmidt openly and honestly about race. Look, Schmidt, being black means whatever I want it to mean. Number six, when he and Cece messed with Big and Little Schmidt. Tell you what, if you guys want to find out who's truly the manliest, you should have a contest. I'm listening. And the winner of this contest will be declared the one true Schmidt. <laughs> yes! When Big Schmidt comes to town for Thanksgiving, Winston teams up with Cece to pit them against each other in a battle of manliness. They give them a series of ridiculous challenges to compete in for their own amusement. Turn them around. Yeah, all right. Faster. Come on, man. Really work those all calves. Right. Look at this, Winston. I can do this all day, man. Yeah, I got it all day, man. Do this all day. I don't even think about it. That's awesome. Keep going. Though it is unofficial, this might be the first ever documented classic Winston CC mess around. Though these two have been acquaintances for a while, this is one of the moments that truly bonds them as friends. Do you guys want to know what the ultimate test is? Being secure in your masculinity. How do we prove that? I'm super secure. You kiss a man. His goofy friendship with Cece and this moment in particular where they manipulate the Schmitz to their whim is first rate. Winston, hmm? all day! Mm -hmm. ah! Whoa! Whoa! Ah! Whoa! I did it! I'm the one true Schmidt! Number five, when he sang Wicked. On a long drive to Mexico, Winston passes the time by singing along to the Wicked cast recording. Winston was all of us at this moment, alone in the car, singing as loud as he can, not caring how off-key he is. Of course, Cece and Schmidt were hiding in the back of the car the whole time, but Winston didn't know that. It's been two hours. This is officially crazy. He just kept singing at the top of his lungs, passionately and unashamed. We should all take a lesson from Brown Lightning here. You do you, Winston. Sing like nobody's listening. And how do you explain this? I can't, sir. <laughs> no one in the entire world can explain that. Number four, when he was Cece's bridesman. We've already mentioned the special nature of Winston and Cece's relationship. Do you mind if I just take one minute to think about it? Pass. 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 They've had a lot of great moments over the years, but this is definitely one of the best. It was extremely heartwarming when Cece asked Winston to be her bridesman, even though he was already one of Schmidt's groomsmen. I know that you're already one of Schmidt's groomsmen, um, but I was hoping you would maybe also consider being one of my bridesmaids. The moment proved just how much they really mean to each other, and even more heartwarming than Cece wanting him to stand by her is just how excited Winston was to do it. You want me to be a bridesmaid? If you don't want to, I... Do you know who you're talking to? Yes. You're talking to Winnie the bitch! Yeah. I would love to be a bridesmaid! Yes? Yes! Yes? Yes! Girl, you are under arrest for taking my breath away! <laughs> This request holds so much more weight considering that just the day before, Winston had gotten Cece drunk while wedding dress shopping and helped her get saddled with the most ridiculous dress. Oh no! Oh no. What did we do? What, you... what is this? Oh my god! How drunk were we? But these kinds of shenanigans are just a staple of their friendship. Why is there a spot for batteries? So the glass can light up. We were really excited about that feature. Number three, the crepe pan. Schmidt is usually the sensitive one of the group, but this time Winston is the one who gets emotional when Coach is getting ready to move to New York with May. Oh, here we go. The Regis Philbin crepe pan. Come on, Coach, you can't give this away. Remember February 2014, or as we like to call it, Crepe, crepe history, history Month. Coach expresses that he wants to make a clean break, leaving anything non-essential behind, but Winston tries to convince him to bring along some mementos, including a crepe pan that is important to both of them. Pop, pop, little bubble. Let that sizzle speak. Time to flip. Q. 
Care to do the honors? Oh, sure, man. That'd be cool. Rude. Coach is pretty ruthless about his clean break routine, and Winston gets more and more upset with him. But eventually he breaks Coach, and the two burst into a crying fit about how much they'll miss each other. Coach, is that a bigger bag? My old bag broke, so I got a wheelie. Same system, still only essentials. Is there a pan in there? The whole thing is pretty hysterical. <laughs> Number two, when he was puzzling. Puzzling. Winston is about to do some puzzling. About to get into some puzzle troubling. There's really no other way to say it other than that Winston gets super weird when he's puzzling. Winston, what can I do for you? Don't talk to me that much. Never lie to me and never ever touch my puzzle. When he first starts, he treats it like it's some new mission he's embarking on, that he has to spend a lot of time and energy on. Watching how annoyed Schmidt gets at Winston's incompetence is hilarious. I'm gonna do you puzzle right on the table, as nasty as you wanna be. Hey Schmidt, what do you think it's gonna look like? What do I think it's going to look like? Yeah, the puzzle. Winston, it's on the box. The, the picture's on the box. It's a Japanese garden. Winston is so terrible that he doesn't even realize that a lot of the pieces he's using are just upside down. And he spends so much time working on it that he runs out of clothes and starts wearing a sweatshirt as his pants. What are you doing? What are you doing? Even, which way what are, are you, you going? Doing? What is happening? Huh? Ow! What did, what did you do? But we can't get as annoyed with him as Schmidt. After all, it turns out he's colorblind. But also, his wonderful weirdness is exactly why we love him. Winston does not get me at all. What? And plus, he's colorblind, which basically makes him cripple. If you didn't think that Winston could get any better, just wait till you see our number one pick. But before we unveil it, here are some honorable mentions. His honey roast. Um, if I had my druthers, you know what, 100% of my druthers, I, I gotta go honey roast. What the hell is that? Don't say it like it's some thing we know. It's a roast, except you say nice things about me. Yes. Honey roast. Sympathy PMS. So you gonna get this like every month? I mean, it's a, it's a possibility from all the information that I've read on the internet that women like you are the alpha. What? Well, you're like the powerful moon and all the women in your life are just latched on to your cycle. Well, in my case, grown ass man. When you learned how to use a ruler. There is no way for me to express my joy except by telling you the width of my smile. <laughs> I can't read it, somebody else read it. Nah, I wanna do it, I wanna do it, hold on. <laughs> but I can't see it, let me turn it over. Ah. When he helped Nick with his zombie novel. Hey man, 13 minutes of sleep. Honestly, Nick, seriously, 13 minutes of sleep, that's all I got. It's starting to look like a pillow to me. All I could think of was like, man, Nick looks exactly like a pillow to me. Mm hmm, what'd you say? Dude, you need some sleep. But I'm out here with you, Yeah. okay? Because I love you, Thank and I you. want you to finish your zombie book. I said, but check out where we are. This is experience. This is what's firing me up to get back to writing. Theodore K. Mullins. You. Get out of my house! Who are you? Who am I? Who am I? Well, I am Theodore K. Mullins. And Nick is my lover on the down low. Tell her, Nick. Tell her how it really goes down in apartment 4D. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Prank Sinatra. Gotcha! <laughs> Prank Sinatra, baby! According to Winston, he is the best at pranks. People even call him Prank Sinatra. But according to the rest of the gang, he is the worst prankster ever. We found a same day chapel and then we got married as a prank. He always goes way too big or way too small. His obliviousness to his own ineptitude is exactly what makes his pranks so great. Wait, that is the plan? You're gonna drop a badger on a priest? Oh. <laughs> man. That can't be the plan, man! Whether it's releasing a badger at Cece's wedding or putting a blueberry in Schmidt's cereal, his pranks are always hilariously awful. How'd this blueberry get in here? <laughs> Woo! You should have saw your face! It's okay, Winston, you always made us laugh. And though he goes by many names like Brown Lightning, Winnie the Bish, and Theodore K. Mullins, we will always know and love him as Prank Sinatra. Ingram Petersky. If you rearrange those letters, what does it spell? 
My greatest prank. My greatest prank. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.